Hello, my name is Keith Bailey, here to bring you NFC 2016 NFL Season Predictions. Now, just a little side note, I already made my AFC prediction videos, and that's not going to change, but with the injuries to Teddy Bridgewater and Tony Romo, I have edited a couple games. However, I only edited games in which the Vikings and Cowboys played other NFC teams. I didn't mess with uh, any NFC-AFC matchup. Uh, because I know the Vikings play the AFC South and the Cowboys play the AFC North. I didn't mess with any of those games because I want to leave the AFC standings the way they were. So, without further ado, here we go. Fourth place team in the A in the we'll start with the NFC North. The Detroit Lions. I have them going three and thirteen. I might regret this. Uh, I just they can throw every, Lions fans can throw every single argument at me as to why they're going to be a lot better than three and thirteen this year. And I understand. Trust me, I do. I'm a Titans fan. Okay, I get these. 2-14, and 3-13 and 13 predictions thrown around my way all the time, but I can name so many reasons why they won't be that, but not a lot of people believe in them, and I get why. I'm one of those in, when it comes to the Lions. I just don't believe in them, but hopefully they prove me wrong. Third place team in the NFC North, I have the Chicago Bears. I have them going 5-11. and 11. Um, The Chicago Bears... It's they got Jay Cutler, okay? That defense isn't stopping anyone anytime soon. That defense didn't really stop much last year, and even if they do make slight improvements, that defense probably won't stop much this year. And they have Jay Cutler. Oh, and did I mention they uh they got Jay Cutler? Yeah. Okay. Kevin White also, according to Camp, isn't what they thought he would be. Maybe he's shaking the cobwebs out, but. I'm not very high in Chicago this year. Second place team in the NFC North. Even with a Teddy Bridgewater injury, I still have the Vikings going a solid 8-8. Eight and eight. I had them originally making the playoffs with Teddy Bridgewater, but now I have them missing the playoffs due to this injury. That being said, the Vikings still had a top 5 NFL defense and arguably the best running back in the NFL. Therefore, that is why I believe the Vikings are still going to be competitive in games. However, you can only go as far as that as your weakest point will take you. And right now, the Vikings' weak point is their quarterback now. So, I do believe that the Minnesota Vikings go 8-8 eight eight this year, whether they have Sean Hill throwing the ball or not. And that leads to your first place team in the NFC North, the Green Bay Packers. I have them going 13-3 and three this year. Jordy Nelson is going to be back. Um, so Aaron Rodgers can go back to slinging balls his way because we all know, and it's fair to say that Green Bay underperformed last year, largely in part due to the fact that he didn't have his number one receiver all year long. So Green Bay, now that they, now that he's got his number one target should be solid. And I also have the Packers as the two seed in the NFC. We're going to go down to the NFC South now. The New Orleans Saints I have as your fourth place team in the NFC South. I have them at six and ten. They addressed the defense a little bit, but the Saints went. I think it was they seven and nine. I think they went seven and nine last year, and Drew Brees put up numbers like ridiculously crazy numbers. But like I said earlier, you can only go as far as your weakest point takes you, and the Saints' weak point is their defense. Even still. Because that defense can't stop anyone. I mean, they gave up yards and yards and yards in every single game they lost. And Drew Brees had to try to win games out throwing opponents. They lost to the Panthers like 41-38 to 38 that way. I mean, how many shootouts did New Orleans lose last year? When you really think about it, they lost a shootout to the Titans. They lost a shootout to Carolina. I think they lost a shootout to Atlanta. I could be wrong. Um they just they lose shootouts because that defense can't stop a nosebleed. Maybe that'll change this year, but I have them at six and ten. Third place team in the NFC South, I have the Atlanta Falcons at six and ten as well. Um they've made improvements. 
They're going in the right direction. Devontae Freeman's a beast. Matt Ryan's still a good quarterback. The defense has gotten a little better, but I can't ignore the collapse last year. Here a team sits at 5-0. and You're sitting pretty. Almost on top of the NFC. You're on top of the entire NFC with Carolina. You're two games up on the Cardinals. You're you're literally sitting pretty. And then for an unexplicable reason, you lose eight of your last 11 games? Really? I mean, I, I don't know what happened. Atlanta has all the tools in the world to be successful. They have Julio Jones. They got Matt Ryan. They got a running game. The defense has gotten better. Their offensive line, they've addressed this offseason, but I have them at 6-10 and 10 because uh, everything's got to add up, equal out somehow, and I just have Atlanta on the wrong end of a lot of games in this prediction um, website. Your second place team in the NFC South, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I had them one win up from a season ago. I had them at 7-9, and nine, uh, slight improvements. I do believe they steal one from Carolina this year. The Buccaneers will be good, a good team. Give it about another year, and they'll be competing with the Panthers for division titles. Um, Tampa Bay has found their franchise quarterback, and he looks solid. So, Jameis Winston, good luck to you, bro. Um, first place team in the NFC South. Also. Your four seed, not your one seed, the Panthers at 10 and 6. I read an interesting article. Uh, I forgot who wrote it, but it was on ESPN. About what it was like uh, average win index based on point differential. And it had just a whole bunch of teams and how they performed based on how many points they scored versus how many points they allowed. And it said that the Panthers out last year outplayed their finished record. Like they underplayed. How do how do I explain? This? There's there's a way to explain this. The Carolina Panthers, yeah, they outperformed expectations. They went 15 and one, but they played like a 12 and four team based on the point differential that they had. That means they had to win a lot of close games that they could have lost. Some of these games being. The Indianapolis Colts, the New Orleans Saints, the Atlanta Falcons, no, not the Falcons, what am I thinking? The Colts, the Saints, they, um, the Jaguars and Texans even gave them little fits. They, don't, they didn't blow either of those teams out of the water. Uh, they only beat the Texans, I believe, by seven points. And that was when the Texans were in the shitty portion of their season. And they were 2-5 and five when they started. The Panthers also... Struggled in games against the Giants. They struggled against the um, Cowboys for a little bit when Tony Romo was, I believe, healthy. I mean, the um, they struggled against the Seahawks, which is understandable, and they struggled against the Packers. They had to pull these games out at the end, and yeah, they are clutch. But now they play a. Uh, they play a tough first place schedule. Yeah, they played a first place schedule last year, but now they get a healthy Green Bay. They should be able to beat Washington. And they have the Cardinals to play. Also, they are playing... What division are they playing? The NFC South is playing the... I want to say, yeah, the NFC, if the NFC North is playing the NFC West, that means the South is playing the East. So that means they're going to get the Giants, Cowboys, Redskins, and Eagles. So it may, be not be the, it may not be the best division, but that means they're going up against, um, who are they going up against? Kirk Cousins, Eli Manning, Dak Prescott, unless uh, Tony Romo's back. Depends on what week the Panthers and Cowboys play this year. Um... What week do they play? Not sure. Won't go into it. But all I know is that the Panthers are going to drop back down to earth a little bit, but they should still win their division. That's pretty much the point I'm trying to make here. I do a lot of talking, so excuse that. 
Next up, we have the NFC East. Uh, I have the Eagles at 6-10. and 10. I gave the Eagles a little bit more respect than I probably should have. Um, they're young. They got a rookie quarterback. Uh, don't be really believe in them. They're trying to erase the memories of Chip Kelly, and I think they get off to a good start here in this year. 6-10 and 10 seems like a fair enough record for a team that is coming out of pretty much a chip apocalypse. So, um, Philadelphia, on the right track. Your third place team in the NFC is I have the Washington Redskins at 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, They pull back a little bit this year. They lost their running back to free agency. Um, Kirk Cousins, can he repeat the success that he had a year ago? Uh, there's a lot of doubt surrounding that, too, because his season could have been a one-year deal. Kind of like somebody by the name of Josh Freeman. Uh, I have the Dallas Cowboys with Dak Prescott as the sixth seed in the NFC. 9-7. and seven. Um, Yeah, 9-7 and seven as a sixth seed. He's playing well. Dak Prescott has looked solid. I know it's preseason, but everyone is very impressed with the way this kid can play. And they have Ezekiel Elliott running behind that offensive line. He may not need to have to do much. So Dallas Cowboys should go 9-7, and seven, and they should have a decent shot at making the playoffs. Your NFC East winner, I have the New York Giants at 10-6. and six. I have the Giants winning that division. Makes more sense now with the Prescott in, with the uh, Tony Romo injury. Prescott's in. Open opportunity for the Giants. They have a talented roster. Eli Manning still a good quarterback. They got Odell Beckham Jr. They fixed up that defense. They put duct tape all over it this offseason. Will that duct tape hold up? Who knows? But I have them going 10-6, and six, and I have them as the three seed in the NFC. Which brings me to the NFC West. I have the fourth place team. First of all, I have to say this is very lopsided. Two teams are way down here at the bottom. Two, and then the next two teams are just way up here at top. Los Angeles, I have them at 4-12. and 12. Um, Jared Goff hasn't really looked like the player the Rams were hoping he would be. Which I think is funny because they gave up an arm and a leg to get this guy. So, I mean, we'll see where it goes. Um, but all I know is that if Case Keenum starts the Los Angeles Rams as good a defense as they have, as good as a young running back they have, will not win more than seven games next year. Seven's their ceiling, if that's the case, but I have them at four. I have the Niners as your third place team in the NFC West. I have them going five and eleven. They're one of the worst teams in the league right now. They have Chip Kelly, who's known to ruin rosters. They have Blaine Gabbert as their number one QB. Let me just say that one more time. They have Blaine Gabbert as their number one QB. Their number one QB. 5-11. and 11. Your second place team in the NFC West, I have the Seattle Seahawks as your five seed, going 11-5. and five. Um... Solid team, solid expectations, still the class, one of the class teams, like the top-notch teams in the NFC, and they'll be back in the playoffs. You can pretty much bank on it. They're not going to get off to any crappy 2-4 and four start again. I think this year they'll start a little faster, but they'll ultimately finish with the same record they did last year. Actually, I think they went 10-6 and six last year. I could be wrong. Um... It's almost midnight here, and I'm tired, so a lot of that is here, but I'm trying to do some good analysis, so bear with me. Your one seed in the NFC, and your winner of the NFC West, I have the Cardinals at 14-2. and two. This team will be solid. If Carson Palmer, I know they're playing bad in the preseason, but if Carson Palmer can play this year the way he played last year, watch out. Because that Cardinals defense, they got a solid duo of running backs. They got like four number one uh, receivers on their team. I mean, Larry Fitzgerald is a one. Um, it's just, this team's just littered with talent all over. And I think they get the one seed. Which brings us to the playoffs. Let's see here. I have the Dallas Cowboys traveling to take on the New York Giants. I think the Giants win this. 
Um, I'm picking the Giants because I mean, Tony Romo may or may not be back. Let's face it. If he comes back halfway through the year, there's one of three things is going to happen. One. Either Dak Prescott will have done so well that they bench Tony Romo and they keep riding with Prescott. Two, Prescott hasn't been doing very well, so they put Tony Romo back in and he gets hurt again, which is the likely scenario. Or three, Tony Romo gets back in because uh, Prescott underperformed and doesn't get injured for the rest of the year somehow. Probably not going to be the last one. But I think the Giants win this game. Um... That brings us to our second wild card game. We have the Seattle Seahawks traveling to take on the Carolina Panthers in what seems like usually what's going to be an inevitable matchup in the playoffs from here on because these two teams have always faced each other in the playoffs now. Uh, two years ago they played. Last year they played. They'll play again this year. Um, they both played similar style games. But I honestly think that the Carolina Panthers season comes to an end in the wild card round this year. I think the Seahawks, I think the Seahawks are too good of a football team to lose to Carolina so many consecutive times because last year they were swept by Carolina. Um I if the um NFC South NFC South jeez the NFC South, I believe, plays. No, never mind. Yeah, the Seahawks and Panthers do play this year. So, I mean, I guess it's a little bit of a mood argument. <coughs> but in the playoffs, this time, I think Seattle goes on the road into Carolina and gets the win, and they finish the business that they didn't finish last year because, let's face it, the game lasted more than 60 minutes. Seattle was winning that game. There was no way they were. The Panthers were out of steam. They got off to such a fast start, 31 to 0, and Seattle just like that, 31-24. I think they'll finish business. Now, you have your Seahawks traveling to take on the Cardinals. This is now this whole thing this whole part is unscripted here cuz I didn't plan this out because I literally just made these last minute picks with the Vikings cuz I had a whole different playoff setup. <coughs> um I'm going to go with uh I'm going to go with Seattle. Seattle late in the season, it's tough to bet against them. Cardinals still have question marks uh late in the season. Seattle's got experience. And I think the Seahawks get to the championship game again. I really do. And they'll play the winner of Packers-Giants. Yes, I am flirting with picking the Giants. But I'm going to... I'm doing it. I'm picking the Giants. This is this will be your surprise for the season. Giants NFC Championship game will beat the Packers, the two seed in the NFC. Because we all like, I was thinking about doing it. I was like, but they're playing the Packers, and every single time the Giants meet the Packers in the playoffs, they always and it happens like once every four years. They always seem to win. I'm picking the Giants. I'm doing it. I'm not ashamed of it. You could scream profanities on me all you want. I'm doing it. I'm pulling the trigger. All right. That gives us Giants Seahawks championship game. Giants are at home. Do I really want to put the Giants in the Super Bowl? Who do I have in the Super Bowl from the AFC side? It's like who? I got. I think it's uh. Yeah. I think it's Pittsburgh. I have, yeah, Pittsburgh. No, I gotta pick Seattle. I can't do it. I I I already went far enough putting the Giants in the freaking championship game. I think the Seattle Seahawks as the five seed win all the way to the Super Bowl. And I think they play the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. 
All right, now I'll let you guys decide who wins that game in the comment section below. <clears throat> My Super Bowl prediction, I believe that the Steelers will win the Super Bowl. But you guys can debate it below. And on that note, those are my predictions. Um, let's see, am I missing something? No? Nah, I'm not missing something. These are my final predictions. Um, argue with them. Debate them all you want. I'm sticking by them. Uh, I understand everyone's got a different viewpoint. But... That's what I believe is going to happen. And those are my final predictions. My name is Keith Bailey. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys next time. I will have power rankings out after the conclusion of the NFL preseason. And we'll go from there. Thanks for watching, everyone.